Dallas and Washington Post columnist Josh Rogan, uh, who writes, when proper context is added to the Milley calls, the picture that emerges is not of a brave military officer saving the country from a crazy president held on and starting a world war. It's more mundane, but all too common Washington story of powerful men with big egos who can't get along, causing government dysfunction and diplomatic confusion. Milley's offense was not treason, it was hubris. Josh Rogan joins us now. I should note he's also the author of Chaos Under Heaven, Trump, Xi, and the Battle for the 21st Century. Josh, a lot there. Can I actually back up for a sure. second here? Because you say a lot in this new column in the Washington Post. And one of the things you do note, and I think it's important for people to realize, is you say Milley wasn't like freelancing here. This was, this was a coordinated effort. What do you mean? Right. Well, every Washington story has like three versions, the leak, the rebuttal, and then the truth, right? So we're now with a lot of reporting from a lot of different outlets, uh, finding out what was really going on with these phone calls between Mark Milley and his Chinese counterpart. And as it turns out, it wasn't really Mark Milley's idea in the first place. Uh, it was a decision by his boss, at that time Defense Secretary Mark Esper, who saw U.S.-China relations getting really tense and decided that he needed to send a signal to the Chinese uh, to cool down tensions. Now, uh, Milley was following his lead, and that doesn't speak to exactly what Milley said, whether he warned the Chinese that we were going to attack. I think that's something Milley will have to address himself when he testifies before Congress next week. But the point is, this was not Mark Milley, you know, saving the republic from a nuclear attack coming from Donald Trump on China. That's not what happened. What happened was that the Pentagon and the White House weren't talking to each other. And then the head of the Pentagon, Mark Esper, decided to do something on China by himself, and Mark Milley was following that. That's a less sexy story, but it has... Uh, the added benefit of being the truth. You say Milley wasn't freelancing, but you make it pretty clear that DOD was kind of freelancing here, right? That there, you talk about it, there had been a breakdown in communications following the Lafayette Square situation, breakdown in comms between DOD and the White House, and furthermore, that it wasn't even clear, as your reporting shows, that China was actually really concerned the U.S. would take military action. Right, right. First of all, there's no evidence that Donald Trump was about to nuke China, right? There was some crazy stuff going on at the White House. The My Pillow guy and Rudy were trying to convince them that the machines were hacked. But that's different from saying Donald Trump was planning to attack China. There's no evidence for that. But what Milley and Esper were doing, they were saying, well, it's getting a little hot in here. Let's turn down the temperature. Now, the reason the White House guys, especially the Trump people, uh, were shocked by that is because they didn't know. Milley and Esper didn't tell the White House, which in any normal world, you would tell the White House, you would coordinate. But they weren't talking to each other because they hated each other because Millie and Esper and the White House guys were not on speaking terms, okay? So that's not to say that, you know, one was right and one was wrong. They just didn't talk to each other, and that's why there was so much confusion. And that confusion spilled into our foreign policy. So what are the Chinese supposed to think? Are they supposed to listen to Esper and Millie? Or are they supposed to listen to Robert O'Brien and Mike Pompeo? And meanwhile, they're sending a signal to us that they're worried about our aggression, but they could have been doing that to screw with us. Because that's what, how they act. You know, maybe they were saying, hey, we think Trump's going to attack because they wanted to see what other we would react. And they got two different reactions, one from Pompeo and O'Brien and a different one from Esper and Milley. Uh, that's not a conspiracy. That's a mess. That's our foreign policy in a mess. And that mess reflects the mess that was going on inside of our government. And that's what was really happening at the end of the Trump administration. So you say hubris, not treason. Why? Right. Yeah. So I think if you read, of course, this book, Peril, by uh, my post colleagues, Bob Woodward and Robert Costa, it hasn't come out yet. But if you look at all of the books, it's pretty clear that Mark Milley, our Joint Chiefs Chairman, was engaged in a series of interactions uh, with foreign officials, with members of Congress, members of the intelligence community, uh, to warn all of them that he was going to save the republic from what he thought would, might be a military coup. Now, you know, first of all, it's, again, it's not clear that I don't see any steps that Trump actually took to, uh, uh, to per perpetrate an attack on China or some sort of military coup. That's not to say there weren't any other shenanigans going on. But there was a, a distinct feeling inside the Trump administration that Mark Milley uh, was taking it upon himself to, to, to be the guardrails of our republic when uh, actually that's not his job. Actually, in America, we place our faith in institutions, not individuals. You know? and, we, uh, and those institutions did hold, and there was no military coup. But now everyone's leaking to uh, reporters who are writing a bunch of books because they want to shape their legacy. And you know, the truth is different than one person's telling of their legacy. The truth is complicated and it's messy and there, nobody's 100% good or 100% bad. But now Mark Milley, because of all of these books, painting him as the hero of the Republic has turned out to be a very controversial figure who's still in charge of the Joint Chiefs. And that's a problem not just for the last administration, but even for this one, 
uh, because when generals get too political and too powerful, that's never a good thing. Josh Rogan, thank you so much for talking with us about your very interesting column today. Security